Hello everyone and welcome to Pharma GLP. In continuation with my last two videos, this is third video on analytical method validation and its parameters. In this video, we will discuss remaining parameters such as linearity and range, limit of detection, limit of quantitation, robustness, filtration study, and solution stability study. Let's continue our discussion with remaining parameters to give you a better understanding of their importance. So, stay tuned and let's get started. Now we will start with linearity and range. Linearity refers to the ability of an analytical method to obtain results that are directly proportional to the concentration within a given range. In simple terms, it means that the results should increase or decrease linearly with the amount of analyte present in the sample. The linearity of an analytical method is essential for accurate quantification of the analyte in the sample. To evaluate linearity, we perform a series of experiments in which the method is applied to samples that contain a range of known concentrations of the analyte. The results are then plotted to determine the linearity of the method. If the plotted graph shows a straight line, it indicates that the method is linear over the range of concentrations tested. Range is another important parameter in analytical method validation. It refers to the interval between the upper and lower levels of analyte that have been demonstrated to produce a suitable level of precision, accuracy, and linearity. The range is determined by testing the method at different concentrations of the analyte. To determine the upper and lower levels of quantification, it is important to establish the range of an analytical method to ensure that it can be used to measure the analyte over a specified concentration range. Let's understand with this example. Let's assume I am preparing five different linearity concentrations that is 50 ppm for 50%, 80 ppm for 80%, 100 ppm for 100%, 120 ppm for 120%, and 150 ppm for 150% to perform the experiment. Now consider my obtained area in case of HPLC or GC. Our absorbance in case of UV is 50 for 50 ppm, 80 for 80 ppm, 100 for 100 ppm, 120 for 120 ppm, and 150 for 150 ppm. In this example, we can observe that the results or area I found are increased or decreased linearly with the proportionately increased or decreased concentration of analyte. If we plotted the graph using these results, it will show a straight line which indicates that our method is linear over the range of concentrations tested. Now in this example the range of our method is 50 ppm that is 50% is lower level and 150 ppm that is 150% is upper level. As per the Beer-Lambert law, the concentration of the substance is proportional to its absorbance. Now, when it comes to range, this parameter determines the linear range of the method. This is important because if the concentration of the analyte is too high or too low, then the method may not be able to produce accurate results. For example, let's say we are measuring the concentration of a substance in a solution. If the range of the method is 0.1 to 1.0 and the concentration of the substance is 0.01, then the method may not be able to accurately measure it. On the other hand, if the concentration of the substance is 10, then it may be outside the linear range of the method and the results may not be accurate. Next, we will be discussing the limit of detection or LOD. The limit of detection or LOD can be defined as the lowest concentration of analyte that can be detected but not necessarily quantified. In other words, it is the lowest amount of analyte that can be reliably detected and distinguished from background noise. The limit of detection of an analytical method is determined by performing a series of experiments using standard with known low concentrations of the analyte. And the results are compared to the blank solution or background noise to determine the lowest concentration that can be reliably detected. This is evaluated by signal-to-noise ratio method or residual standard deviation of response and slope or by visual evaluation in case of non-instrumental methods. Limit of detection is an important parameter because it determines the sensitivity of a method. A method with a low detection limit is more sensitive and can detect low concentrations of analyte. 
After that we will be discussing the concept of limit of quantitation, also known as LOQ. These terms are used to describe the lowest concentration of an analyte that can be both detected and quantified with suitable precision and accuracy. This step is used to evaluate the ability of a method to measure the analyte at a specific level. This means that any amount of the substance below the LOQ cannot be reliably measured using the given method. The LOQ is also affected by factors such as the instrumentation used and the complexity of the sample matrix. Or we can say the LOQ can vary depending on the specific method used, the instrument's sensitivity, and the nature of the substance being measured. The LOQ is also evaluated by signal-to-noise ratio method or residual standard deviation of response and slope. Or by visual evaluation in case of non-instrumental methods. It is important to establish the LOQ for any analytical method to ensure accurate and reliable results. These values allow us to determine the lowest amount or concentration of a substance that can be detected and quantified by the method. Now we will be discussing the concept of robustness in analytical methods. Robustness is one of the most important parameters to consider when evaluating an analytical method because it ensures that the method remains reliable and provides accurate results even when small variations occur. This is especially important when multiple users are using the same method or when the method is used over an extended period of time. There are a higher chances of small changes being introduced into the method without the user realizing it. For example, during sample weight, during adjustment of pH using pH meter or composition of solvents, while preparation of mobile phase. These small changes can have a significant impact on the accuracy and precision of the results obtained. By ensuring that a method is robust, we can be confident in the reliability of the results even when small changes are made in method parameters. It is defined as the ability of a method to remain unaffected by small but deliberate variations or changes in method parameters and provides accurate and precise results. In simple words, robustness is how well does the method perform when small changes are made to the method. To assess the robustness of an analytical method, a study can be conducted to determine the effect of small but deliberate variations in method parameters such as pH, temperature or flow rate on the accuracy and precision of the results. These parameters can be varied within a certain range and monitoring the effect on the results to determine the critical method parameters and the limits within which they can be varied without compromising the results. Robustness is a critical parameter in analytical method validations because methods that are not robust may produce unreliable results which can lead to incorrect decisions and ultimately affect the quality of the product. A robust method can also help to ensure the consistency of results which is important when testing different batches of a product or when testing in different laboratories. Next is filtration study. Filtration is the process of separating particles or substances from a solution by passing it through a filter. Filtration study is further divided into two parts, that is, filter compatibility study and filter saturation study. Filter compatibility study is a process used to evaluate whether the filter being used in a specific analytical method is compatible with the sample solution being tested. It is important to understand the compatibility of the filter as it may affect the accuracy of the results obtained. To evaluate the compatibility of the filter, a filter compatibility study can be conducted by preparing the sample solution as described in the methodology. The sample solution is then passed through the filter and analyzed to determine if any interference has occurred. The results obtained are compared to determine the compatibility of the filter with the sample solution. Now let's understand filter saturation study. During a filtration activity, the solution may absorbed by the filter that could affect the results and obtain inaccurate results. By conducting a filter saturation study, we can determine exact discard volume to produce accurate results. To evaluate the effectiveness of the filtration process, a filter saturation study can be conducted by preparing sample solutions as described in the methodology. 
the sample solution is then filtered and the filtered sample solution is collected by discarding different volumes such as 1 ml 2 ml 3 ml 4 ml 5 ml 6 ml or 7 ml in separate dry and clean test tubes the obtained filtered sample solution is then analyzed as per the methodology and the obtained results are calculated the difference in obtained results for each discard volume is compared to set the exact discard volume of sample solution in method for example if obtained assay results for 1 ml filtered solution is 95% for 2 ml solution is 96% for 3 ml solution is 99% for 4 ml solution is also 99% and 5 ml solution is also 99% then we can set the discard volume as 3 ml at which the filter got saturated now our last parameter is solution stability study solution stability study is a process used to evaluate the stability of a solution over a period of time the solution can be affected by factors such as temperature light and time by conducting a solution stability study we can determine the period for which the solution is stable and ensure that the results obtained are accurate a solution stability study can be conducted by preparing the sample solution as described in the methodology the sample solution is then stored at a specific temperature and analyzed at different time intervals the results obtained at each time interval are compared to determine the stability of the solution that's all for today's video hope you found it informative and useful if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them in the comment section below don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel pharma glp for more informative videos like this thank you for watching and see you in the next video